Hello YouTube. I am Mike, I'm a UK registered nurse and I am in the process of emigrating with my family to New Zealand, I hope. Uh, I've just got to the point in my journey where I am licensed to nurse in New Zealand. I have a New Zealand uh, pin for the Nursing Council of New Zealand, finally. It's taken uh, about seven months to get to this point. So I'm going to start keeping uh, a video blog of the journey of myself and my family uh, as we try and emigrate to New Zealand, kind of in the hope that um, other people, particularly nurses, who might want to follow in my footsteps, who might want to do the same thing as me, uh, avoid some of the pitfalls and traps that I've fallen into already, um, save some of the needless expense that I've incurred that I could have avoided, uh, and that's going to be the purpose of this blog uh, from now on. I'm going to uh, try and make it into a playlist uh, that's just about me emigrating with my family to New Zealand uh, and this is going to be part one. So part one uh, I'm not going to discuss why I'm emigrating to New Zealand. I've given this some thought um, and I don't think it's useful. I don't think it adds anything to the discussion um, for me to talk about my reasons or my politics or anything else, it, it's not helpful. So, since that's not the purpose of this video and I don't want to go on a rant, I'm only going to talk about how it happens, not why it's happening. Um, the first thing, if you're a registered nurse, you're going to want to do if you want to live and work in New Zealand is apply to the Nursing Council of New Zealand for your professional registration. Now the Nursing Council of New Zealand, as you probably guessed, is the equivalent of the United Kingdom's Nursing Midwifery Council. It's the professional regulator for all registered nursing uh, activity in New Zealand. Um, you have, if you have a UK PIN and particularly if you have a UK nursing qualification, you have a very big advantage uh, in applying for New Zealand registration. In fact, you have several big advantages. The first one is that you won't have to prove language competency. If you have qualified in a UK university, you do not have to demonstrate that you can speak English. The assumption is that if you were educated to degree level in English, then you can speak English to a good enough standard to practice in New Zealand. I do recommend, um, on, a, on a slight side note, uh, this book, uh, Maori Made Easy. Now, I, ha I, I came across this um, because I downloaded the audiobook for uh, as part of my monthly subscription on Audible. Um, and it quickly became clear working through that that I would want the workbooks as well. So, um, <clears throat> New Zealand is a culture which embraces its First Nations. Um, there are Maori words written into New Zealand law without explanation because it's assumed that people will understand them. Um, I cannot uh, say it's compulsory, but I think it's, you know, in the same way that when I visit France, I make an effort to speak French. You know, if I visit Germany, I make an effort to sprechen Deutsch. If I, you know, go to Italy, I try and learn some Italian before I go. Um, I'm moving to a country which has another language and I'm going to make an effort to learn some of that language. Uh, and I think that's important because um, I, I'm in danger of getting sidetracked here, but it does help to engage with people of different cultures if you can actually find some common language and common ground. However, let's talk about the process of getting registered. Um, when you first apply to the Nursing Council of New Zealand, you will be directed to the website of a company called CGFNS International. They are based in Seattle in the United States, and they are the company that uh, the NCNZ use to validate all of your credentials. For, the, for that company, you are A, going to have to pay a fairly hefty fee for their services. I think it's about $485 New Zealand dollars from memory. Um, you will also have to pay fees associated with using a notary public to provide notarized copies of some of your documents. Um, and I paid about 
uh, GB pounds for the privilege of having the documents I needed copied and sent by my notary to CGFNS International. Um, they will also want to see things like your academic transcripts, uh, depending on which university you went to is going to depend how long that takes and whether you get charged for it. Um, I went to Cardiff University. Um, they actually were very, very good, provided my transcript free of charge and sent it to CGFNS at their own expense. Um, I could not could not have asked for more from Cardiff University School of Nursing and Midwifery Studies. Um, they really did very well by me. Uh, you will also need to contact the Nursing Midwifery Council and uh, they will need to send CGFNS International uh, a certificate of current practice. Now, that is not as straightforward as you think and it costs £34 every time you order this particular piece of paper, despite the fact that you will never see it, it gets sent straight to the person who needs it. When you order it on the website, you click which country is it going to and where within that country. Now, I, of course, clicked New Zealand and I clicked the address of the Nursing Council of New Zealand and I spent my £34 and off it got sent. And then I realised it was going to the wrong place. It needed to go to CGFNS International. So I had to order another one. I had to click country United States and in the drop down for United States, is CGFNS International. So uh, I had to spend another £34 having a copy of this document sent to them. Um, so once you've had uh, you, your uh, academic transcript, your certificate of current practice, your identity documents and your proofs of address, um, so you know utility bills, bank statements, you're going to need a passport, uh, probably a driving license if like me you've ever changed your name um, because my name changed when I got married they needed my marriage certificate um, you also need transcripts from former employers um, going back about 10 years uh, to show that you have worked the dates that you claim you've worked and you have done the hours that you say you have done in terms of clinical work nursing work um, some employers are better at that than others. Uh, certainly from my experience, there is there can be a little bit of confusion because not every employer will have done this before or done it regularly enough to know how to do it. And you may you may find that there's a, a little bit of confusion about that. But the helpful thing is that CGFNS provides you with a set of forms um, and effectively you send that form to the employer and you with your signature on it, authorizing them to do what you need. And if you're lucky, they will fill in the form and then they will send it off on your behalf, uh, which is what my former employees did. They were excellent. Um, I have to say they took a little bit of work, but uh, it was done. Um, once you have got all of your documents in, they are evaluated by CGFNS International. Uh, they then prepare a report for the Nursing Council of New Zealand and send it to the Nursing Council of New Zealand saying, um, yes, this person meets all of the requirements of registration. Now, at this point, the Nursing Council of New Zealand will refer you to Equifax and tell you you need to have an international criminal history check done, which, again, is another expense. Um, relatively quick. Uh, another, this is another part of the process that requires you to send proofs of identity and proofs of address. Um, they they work very fast. I think mine was back within two weeks. I did have a, a couple of supplementary questions I needed to answer on that one again because I've changed my name. Um, but they work very very fast. They have their report back to uh, the Nursing Council of New Zealand within a couple of weeks. Um, you do have to notify the Nursing Council of New Zealand at every stage of the process. So once you've applied, you go to them and you say, this is the reference number for my application. Once the check is complete, you have a badge. You have an electronic badge, um, which you can add to anything, which demonstrates that you are fit to work in Australia and New Zealand. Um, the number off of that badge you need to send to the Nursing Council of New Zealand and say, here is my proof that I am fit to work and I've passed these checks, the Nursing Council of New Zealand will then, all things being equal and all things being well, will add you to the Register of Nurses. Now, that does not allow you to practice in New Zealand. Before you can practice in New Zealand, you need to have a, an, I'll get this right, an annual 
practice certificate or an annual certificate of practice it's one or the other um, that is a document that uh, is the equivalent of the annual renewal for the nursing and midwifery council um, now i got mine yesterday uh, and and there is a condition on that one for me because the uh, statement of current practice that the nursing midwifery council will produce for you on their website at the cost of 34 pounds um, doesn't cover all of the details that the nursing council of new zealand want uh, they want what's called a letter of good standing and you have to go to the nursing midwifery council directly contact them outline exactly what the nursing council of new zealand want um, and email them and say would you please do this letter of good standing on your own letterhead and email it to this email address which is the nursing council of new zealand quoting my new zealand pin number mm. excuse me i have small children it's not my fault they don't sleep so neither do i um once that's done um you are then um, as i am now in the position where you can apply for jobs in new zealand um now i have friends uh, former colleagues in new zealand who practice and i am told that it's best to have that annual certificate of practice in place um, as soon as possible because when you apply for jobs employers will search to see is this person actually allowed to practice in new zealand and if you don't have the annual certificate of practice the answer will come back no you're not um, so you do need to have that in place it's also worth noting that as happened with me the first annual annual certificate of practice you buy might not be for a year um, they line up the renewal with the end of the calendar quarter in which you were born so i was born in june therefore my certificate renews on the 30th of june despite the fact that i bought it on the 30th of september so i miss three or four months of uh three months sorry um of uh that certificate despite paying full price now that's not as bad as it sounds because the while, while my nursing and midwifery council pin number costs me 140 pounds a year my uh, annual practice certificate with the nursing council of new zealand only cost me 55 pounds or 110 new zealand dollars um so i to be honest wasn't bothered enough about that uh, discrepancy to make too much of it but i did email the nursing council of new zealand and ask them why it had occurred and they came back very quickly and explained it to me um so this is step one the next step on my journey is uh, i have an appointment with uh, a specialist recruitment uh, consultancy and uh, immigration advisory uh, group i haven't paid them anything yet so I, I, that'll be um that'll be an interesting discussion to have because obviously nothing comes for free um but so far the advice that i've i've had from them has been without cost and without obligation so um i will let you know how that goes if they perform um well for me then i will give them a plug on here um i won't say which company i'm going with as yet but uh you know as i say if, if they if they do what i hope they're going to do for me then uh, they'll get they'll get a plug um that's it from me that's it for this episode because as i say all, all i've done at this point is get my professional registration to work in new zealand now i should tell you the reason i started with that is because it took seven months um i applied in february and i was finally licensed to practice in new zealand the 30th of september um now it is a long process it's an expensive process i believe i've spent in the region of a thousand pounds getting this far um i could sit and total it up um there's fees for the ncnz there's fees for cgf and s international there's fees to equifax for your criminal history check there are fees to the nursing midwifery council for your uh certificate of good of good standing uh, certificate of practice um and then there's fees to the nursing council of new zealand for your annual practice certificate uh, again on top of what you've already paid to them so it's not a cheap process it's not a quick process 
and the majority of that time is dealing with all of the uh, people who have to supply documents on your behalf um, and unfortunately where that's concerned that can take as long as it takes them and it's that will come down to how hard you're willing to push them for those documents um, certainly with one of my employers I had to chase three or four times over a period of several months um, just to get hold of a person who was willing to take responsibility to, for, for actually doing it. When I did find someone who was willing to take responsibility, he was fantastic and he got it done very, very quickly and very, very efficiently um, and could not have been more helpful. I hope your experience is the same or better than mine, but uh, that's me for now. Um, I will follow this up in, in I hope, the not too distant future, but as my lunch break is over and I need to... Uh, get back from work I know I'm not dressed as a nurse at the moment but I'm working from home today um, my lunch break is over I need to get back to work I will talk to you all again as soon as I have more news